Hi Sandy. Hi Rosie. Hi guys. Hope you guys are having a good Saturday. Sure is pretty out today. We got the window open. The sun's shining and it's like 70 degrees. And it's been pretty cold here lately. So we can open our window today and it feels like summer out there. Okay, guys. Mm -hmm. Let's begin our Bible reading today, where we left off yesterday, with um, Mark chapter 4, verse 26, reading through chapter 5, verse 20 today. And we are at the parable of the growing seed. Remember we were talking about the seeds that fell on the ground and stuff yesterday the parable that Jesus told he Jesus also said this is what the kingdom of God is like a man scatters seed on the ground night and day whether he sleeps or gets up the seed sprouts and grows though he does not know how all by itself the soil produces grain First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Jesus always talked in parables, but that's the way he was supposed to be, talking like that. To always be hearing but never understanding. Why? I don't know. But that's just the way God wanted it. So, and then he tells us through the disciples what these parables mean because we are, our hearts are not, our hearts are hardened too much to understand what it means by listening to it. We don't have enough faith. So that's why now if you understand the parable without it being explained to you, you know, you've got enough, you've got the faith to know what Jesus is talking about. So let's go on, which I've been talking a lot, a lot about this, especially yesterday. <laughs> I can't remember if I told you guys or not, but end of the video. The parable of the mustard seed. April, I know you know what I'm talking about. I've been saying that a lot yesterday and the days before. Of course, nobody listened. All right, let's hear the parable of the mustard seed. This is a good parable, and it's very, very true. I'll prove that at the end of the video. Again, he, Jesus, said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or... What parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in the shade. Isn't that amazing? The smallest seed can turn into the biggest like tree-like thing. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. No, it didn't, it didn't continue to tell what the mustard seed was about there. So... I'll put it for you guys. In the King James Version, it tells how the mustard seed, Jesus says, means, you know, that's talking about your faith. If you have faith, Jesus says, if you just have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it'll move. You've got to have faith, even faith that small. He means, he, Jesus means miracles can happen. Just have faith that God can do it. 
And like I said at the end of the video, I'll tell you something that happened. Now this. The disciples, no matter how much they've seen Jesus do already, they still like just can't comprehend that he is, you know, able to do anything. And you'll see. Jesus calms the storm. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Jesus did, let us go over to the other side, meaning the other side of the land, by a boat. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. You can just imagine the wind roaring and the waves clashing into the boat and them falling all over, okay? Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. Of course, already knowing what's going to happen. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Jesus got up, reboked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. The sea was completely calm. No big clashing waves. The wind was not roaring and blowing. It stopped. It was all quiet. Okay. He said to his disciples, Why... Are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. They still just, they, they, they keep saying that they believe Jesus is the Son of God, but they still like, every time he like does a, a miracle, they're like stunned by it, like, they're surprised that he can do that. Being the, being the son of God, they're still thinking he's thinking of him as like a mere man. And that's what Jesus is talking about. Do you still have... Where is your faith? But as you see, they get stronger. If not, we wouldn't know about it, would we? If the disciples didn't continue on with Jesus preaching about him where would we be today Jesus restores a demon possessed man now you gotta you gotta hear this I know we read about in Matthew but still some of you guys might not have been with us then they went across the lake to a region of the Gersenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit, meaning possessed by the devil in his some of his evil spirits, came from the tombs to meet him. The tombs now. You know, he was an evil spirit. He was having that man like live in the tombs and stuff. Because the neighbor the neighbor the village people people who lived in the villages kicked him out. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore. Not even with a chain. That's how strong the demons was. For he had often been chained hand and foot. But he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones probably praying for death and trying to kill himself because of those evil spirits that are in him torturing him relentlessly day and night. When the demon possessed man, when Jesus got the boat, when he saw Jesus from a distance coming, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, 
What is your name? Asking the impure spirit's name. He's talking to the demon at this point. My name is Legion, the demon said, for we are many. This guy had many demons inside him. And he begged, the demons begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. The large herd of pigs were feeding on a nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, pigs, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. About 2,000. Now you see how many demons were living inside this man. How tortured he was that when they was put in the pigs, 2,000 pigs were possessed and jumped over the bank into the lake and drowned or killed themselves. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and the countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. But this... When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed in his clothes, in his right mind, and they were afraid, dressed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. The people, get this, then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. Why? Why would they want him to leave when he just performed such a great miracle? Wouldn't you think they would want him to stay and perform more miracles for them? I don't understand that at all. But people do a lot of things that I don't understand, that we don't understand. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged Jesus to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and all the people were amazed. Even though they wanted Jesus out of there. They were still all amazed because they had seen this guy possessed. They knew he was crazy. They had tried to chain this man and nobody, no matter how many people could, none of them could contain him. Which who could with 2,000 spirits, impure spirits in somebody besides Jesus and our Father in Heaven, right? Nobody could have cured him but them. All right. We are continuing on with our psalm today, which is Psalm 37 still, with verses 30 through verse 40. So we're reading 10 psalms today. Beautiful psalm. Still love this psalm. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak what is just. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous. They sure do. Intent on putting them to death, just like they did Jesus. But the Lord will not leave them in the power of the wicked, or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Hope in the Lord and keep his ways. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. I have seen a wicked and ruthless man flourishing like a luxuriant native tree, but he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless. Observe the upright. A future waits those who seek peace, but all sinners will be destroyed. There will be no future for the wicked. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. 
He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Amen. The Lord sure does. He's got his children's back, Jack. Don't mean your life's going to be perfect. And God's not going to punish you for your mistakes. Just like a good parent would their children. You know, of course, not abusing, but correcting. You know what I mean. Good parents, good aunts, April. Correcting children instead of beating and abusing them. I don't agree with that whatsoever. Because I've dealt with that all my life. With my niece and nephew and... No kid should have to be treated that way. Period. And children's services is a joke, mind you. Let me just get that out there real quick. They take the children of the people who are really good to their kids. Like a kid fake cries in there just to get their way. And they take that kid away. But to the people that really need their kids taken away, they don't. Anyway, I could go on about that, but I'm not. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 6 and 7 is where we're going to end our Bible reading today. Blessings crown the head of the righteous, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. The name of the righteous is used in blessings, but the name of the wicked will rot. Okay, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. And I'm not saying, when I talk about children's services, I'm not saying that everybody that works at children's services is bad. I'm de definitely not saying that. I'm just saying they have failed. Um, a lot of kids, but not, I'm not talking about anybody in particular that works there because I think doing that job is a very good, important job and takes a lot of heart to do that job and a lot of strength because I don't think I could do it, especially the ones that are taken when even a kid that's abused is going to cry to stay there with their parents, just like an animal would. You beat a dog, and your dog will still be loyal to you, you know what I mean? And it's sad. I've watched videos on YouTube about it where they went to get kids from children's services, went to get them, and they cry and beg and hold on to their parents' leg, and they grab them and put them in the car, and it's... I couldn't do that job. I just couldn't. I'm not strong enough. So, people that work there really have to be strong and have a good heart at the same time. Some don't, but a lot do. Now we can stop talking about that. Okay, I don't remember if I told you guys this yesterday. You know how my mind is. When I was talking about the mustard seed, I have been asking for prayers from my stepmom, Barb, post, because um, they were saying, people were telling me, the family, as soon as they take the tube out of her mouth, the vent, you know, the life support ventilator thing, she's going to die right then. I was on the phone personally with my sister, Barb's daughter, yesterday, a couple times. And she said, Sis, we're getting ready to take the tube out. And I told her I had been praying for her, for God to heal her and get her well. And I've had many people praying. You guys been praying. And um, the doctor said, you know, there wasn't no hope. Take the tube out and she's gone. Just immediately they thought it wasn't five or ten minutes later my sister called me back and she said miss she's eating I said what 
What'd you say? She said, Mom is sitting up in bed talking to us like she, like nothing ever happened, and she is sitting there eating right now. And the doctors are just looking at her and telling us they don't know what happened. They can't figure out what went on. I know what went on. God went on. That's what went on. Our prayers to our Father. He answered our prayers. Now, I'm not saying she's out of the woods, but God showed them, by golly, he could do a miracle, didn't he? Because those doctors still can't believe it. Everybody can't. They thought for sure she was going to be dead as soon as they took that vet out. <laughs> I just started, I was just so happy. I started, oh my God, I was so, I was so happy. It was, it was a good, good time then, yesterday. So, a really good, happy moment. They said, my sister said, the doctors said, she could still, um, she would never be able to walk again because her legs, the infection and stuff. And she may have to be on dialysis three times a week. And she may have to be living in a, like a nursing home rehabilitation place the rest of her life. But they also said she was going to die as soon as they took the vent off. So they don't know, you know. Only God truly knows. And the doctors, I guess she's been having many strokes the time she's been out in the coma and stuff and um, they said she can still continue to have those strokes too which could you know damage her brain and stuff but she gave her own she was awake enough and her, to herself again she was talking to the doctor telling them what she want doing her own she was able to do her own medical decisions she told them if it happened again or whatever she does not want the ventilator she does not want them to try to save her that she wants them just to let her go and um, my sister said she told him she wanted her body donated to science which she had actually told me that before too I didn't know if the, I didn't really think they would do that though but because you know I didn't you know I thought they would want to bury her and you know have a funeral but I don't know but my sister said that's what she said she wanted done which like I said I know she's told me personally I've heard her say she's one of her body donated to science. So, um, yeah, she gave those orders yesterday, just in case. And, um, but then, and I told you guys, I said, keep, please keep praying for Christopher because he is, you know, so much better. He might be getting out, um, March 2nd. But he's working and trying to get um, all built up and working in the gym at the hospital. Trying to get his strength and stuff, hoping they'll let him out before then. Well, you get slapped in the face. You get, you get good news, take a step forward, then you get knocked back down. Because one step forward, two steps back. As soon as I got done with the Bible reading and got on Facebook yesterday, this is what I read straight from his mom. Please pray for Christopher Surback. Things just went bad. Chris sees today. This was yesterday. They found a spot on the brain and his lung on the left lower has fluid and has collapsed again. Please. Plus, there is infection in the right lung again. Please pray for him oh, I, it takes you from a really good high being happy to straight down feeling miserable again and so guys he desperately needs prayers again desperately and he's got to be feeling so bad he was so happy thinking he was going to get out of there and he was getting better and now today, as soon as I get on here, I read this from his mom. She had just put on 52 minutes ago. We are waiting to go to the MRI. Chris now has juvenile myocolonial epilepsy. We hope the MRI will tell us more today. They started him on Keppera.
he's got to be... He was so mad at himself to begin with when it happened the first time when he woke up. He was apologizing and he was trying and apologizing to Abby, telling her he was sorry because he was in the hospital and stuff. And now he was so happy getting ready to get out and they were going to, you know, get to see each other more and he'd be home. And he was just so happy to get out of the hospital and be home again, be normal, you know, healthy again. And now this, he's got to be so mad and so upset. I don't know how Abby's taking it. I'm going to call here after I'm done with the video and talk to her about it. i got to have a chat with her about Chris. And, um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that he desperately needs prayers again. And please continue to pray for Barb because, like I said, she could take a turn for the worse again. And Christopher has really took it a turn for the worse. So he desperately needs our prayers, guys. So please pray to our Father to keep getting him better. I knew I shouldn't have slacked off praying for him because he was better. I knew I should have kept praying for him until he was out of the hospital. I just knew it. And I kept slacking off on the prayers because he was so much better, you know, and getting ready to get out of the hospital and stuff. He was doing so good. So I thought he was okay, you know, and didn't need that much prayer, you know, as we had prayed for him, you know, when he was critical. But and now this happens. So we got to go back to praying really hard for Christopher. And I, you know, got you guys, I would truly, truly appreciate it. If you would, and go to, if you go to your church tomorrow, please put Christopher Sir back, back on your prayer list and Barb Post. Um, and ask prayer for Chris wherever you can. The family would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And for Barb as well. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.